It's about time for our session with Coach Ivan. I double-check my email, then make my way to the uh, pre-combat room. That's where we're supposed to meet him. Are we going to be dressed up? As I walk in, I see the rest of my team crowded around the hollow table. Nope, just uniforms. Okay. And when I said dressed I up, I meant like the combat all this. this is incredible. Yuna grins. Yep, this consultation isn't just for the pilots. It's for everyone on the team. Valerie scrolls through the projected hologram, pausing at an image of a gear loaded with statistics. As I approach, I can make out what looks like the game plans of previous professional matches, complete with sketches, tactics, movements, and calls. This sort of edited information is incredibly valuable for all parties on the team. That's true. Show was the first to notice me. Brosif! Once he sounds my arrival, the rest of my team grin or wave at me. Hey, guys. Show puts an arm around my shoulder. Are you ready to meet Ivan? Yeah, you know it. There's nothing left to do but wait for Ivan to arrive. Valerie and Mayu continue to scroll through the hollow table while the rest of us take seats on the couches lining the walls. What do you guys think Coach Ivan is like? Is Coyote nervous? She keeps a cool facade, but her gaze constantly darts towards the door. I heard he's the shot caller on his team. He's the one leading the tactics and pulling in the high numbers. Mm. Mm-hmm. He's even received the MVP award twice already. I remember they'd mentioned that yesterday as well. I rack my brain, trying to understand why I hadn't heard of him before. The only player I remember who won two MVP awards on the national stage is Strong Arm Gear. Right. That's his Elias for the global stage. I believe it's Alias, actually. Hmm. I always thought it was a little strange that he never even took off his helmet for interviews. He doesn't need to. He doesn't even speak in interviews. Oh. Cowdy nods. What? That's his persona, and it's worked really well for him. Hearing all of this just makes me even more curious about what kind of person Coach Ivan is. Wait, so if he doesn't even speak, how do we know he's the same person consistently? Wait, how is he going to coach us? <laughs> Does he even know how to talk? Don't be stupid, Show. Of course he can talk. Cowdy blinks. I think... Like, you can really hear the echo in Cowdy's lines. Actually, I've heard rumors that his face was half burnt during a racing motorcycle accident. That's why he always wears a helmet. Mm. I think I remember reading that, too. Ouch! I cringed just remembering the rare couple of times I fell off my bike. I don't even want to imagine how painful it would be to fall off my bike while racing. What, what if he's scary? I've heard he yells at first-year pilots. Or worse. <laughs> oh no, poor Mayu. <laughs> Mayu's eyes widen. What? what? Valerie pats Mayu sympathetically on the back. It was nice knowing you. Her eyes well up with tears. Oh no! Stop being mean, Valerie. She's so scared. Don't listen to Valerie. She's just teasing. Valerie smirks. Or am I? <laughs> Learn when to quit. <laughs> I was gonna say, you're all here again, but I guess someone's appearing at the end. I assume it's Ivan? The door slides open, catching all of our attention. A muscular man, well over six feet tall, commands the room. He's wearing a leather jacket with black pants. A polished helmet hides his face. He crosses the room with thunderous steps and pauses before us, as large and silent as a mountain. The art style, it looks so weird compared to everything else. It looks really weird in comparison. I don't, I don't like it. The group glances nervously at each other. Nobody wants to break the silence. Uh, hello? His helmet slowly turns towards me, and I fidget beneath his gaze. I can't see his eyes, which makes this all the more disconcerting. After a moment, his helmet, sur his helmet surveys the rest of the team. Cowdy remains stoic while Mayu tries to make herself small. Both Yuna and Valerie look uncertain while Sho seems confused about how he should feel. <laughs> Coach Ivan nods. He puts his hands on either side of his helmet. Sho catches my eyes in anticipation. Are we actually going to see what's underneath the helmet? Yup. Coach Ivan pulls it off in one sweeping motion, revealing a shiny bald head and the most beautiful mustache I've ever seen. Underneath his mustache is a beaming smile. A glorious day to make your acquaintance! What? 
His jacket has somehow unzipped itself and reveals washboard abs I can only achieve in my dreams. Under the wings of experience, I shall teach you to soar the skies. Alright. Cody's face falls. She looks like her nightmare has come to life. The rest of the girls are mirrors of confusion. So, on the other hand, looks as if his dreams have come true. Do you know someone named Tatsuo by any chance? That's what I was wondering. Ivan looks so show. Even with his smile, his piercing gaze is unsettling, and Sho scoots back. You speak of my nephew? Ah, oh, well that makes sense. That explains a lot. Yeah. Yuna stands up. Hi, Mr. Podubny. Thank you for agreeing to coach our team this afternoon. Alter not my family name. All formalities between friends must not exist. Okay. Oh, um, okay. Ivan, thank you. He nods. Of course. We will begin with lesson one. To sprout into a magnificent tree, we must first water the roots. Okay. The foundations? Yes, fiery flower. <laughs> the roots. That's right, fiery flower. Ivan motions us to the holograph. We cautiously approach and Ivan projects an image of a seed. First, the seed requires sunlight, water, carbon dioxide, and rich soil. Does it require carbon dioxide? I thought that it let out carbon dioxide. I thought it needed nitrogen, but I guess that's part of the soil? The key to remember is the symbiotic relationship between plant and environment. But I'm not a botanist, I don't know. Through light energy absorbed by chlorophyll, conversion occurs of carbon dioxide and water to create glucose and oxygen. That's fair. Oh, yeah. No. When I'm thinking about exuding carbon dioxide, I suppose, that's, I think I'm thinking of us. Yeah, they use that process. But there's nitrogen as well, but I guess, again, like I said, that was part of the soil thing. Have I fallen asleep and started dreaming I'm in class again? Jeez, this is like listening to Valerie explain- EXPLAIN WHAT SHOW! WHAM! Did you say something? Show rubs his fresh bruise. Of course not, nothing at all. Good. Valerie turns back to the holograph. Show looks at me. I think she's been hanging around Calvin <laughs> for too long. <laughs> it's, it's gonna be another wham. WHAM! Did you say something? No! Of course so. You dare question the wondrous feet of photosynthesis? Ivan stalks up to show and stares him down. His mustache droops in disappointment. No, uh, I mean, yes. Yes, and it's wondrous. Please, don't hurt me. Ivan stares suspiciously at show before resuming his lecture. We try to follow the best we can as he continues to talk. After finishing his lecture on plan planet science, he looks at all of us. Understood? He is met with silence. Ivan uses his fingers to elongate his mustache in great thought. Demonstration will triumph explanation. Yes, please. Ivan nods solemnly. Make haste to the simulations. Fair enough. As soon as we enter the simulation, Ivan sets us up to spar with AI gears. Once the match is over, he points out where we lost focus or how we could have prevented getting hit, then gives us suggestions on how to tighten up as a unit. Once he shared his insight, he sends us back in for another round. While we fight the AIs, Ivan and Valerie talk quietly about simple fixes to our gears. He seems pleased by what Valerie shares with him. I assume she mentioned the original tweaks she added to our gears when she first joined the team. The more Valerie talks, the more animated Ivan becomes. Yuna watches everyone closely and jots down notes on her tablet. I have a feeling she's recording feedback on our session with Coach Ivan as well as recording feedback from our simulated matches. Based on just the brief notes Ivan provided on our first match, our second match felt worlds apart from the first. It's quite apparent why he won two MVP awards. He truly lives up to his title of Strong Arm Gear. So long as you can decipher what he says. He's quirky. He's quirky. We exit the simulator feeling satisfied and more confident than before. Ivan greets us by the hollow table. And so the dial of time lands for my departure. Thank you so much, Mr. Pu- His icy gaze falls on show. <laughs> I mean, thanks, Ivan. Ivan smiles. We appreciate your time. And all this data analysis will help me fine-tune the gears to give him that extra boost. We can't lose after a training session like that. Good. 
Ivan begins to sniffle. Is something wrong? <laughs> he rubs his eyes with his forearm. You guys. Suddenly, Ivan scoops all of us into a group hug. Make me so proud! Thank you, Ivan! He squeezes us so tightly I gasp for air. Show mouths help me while trying to wriggle free. Mayu looks terrified as she squished into Yuna's chest. <laughs> Valerie tries to hug Ivan's arm while Coyote looks like a deer in headlights and struggles to break free. Ivan doesn't notice. Hey! After one last squeeze, he releases us and lets out a deep sigh. And so the nest perch on the branch finds its awakening. Go forth, hatchlings! Thank you, Ivan. <laughs> his helmet magically materializes in his hand. He puts it on and zips up his jacket, then offers us a final thumbs up. We wave goodbye as he heads out, calling out our thanks to his retreating form. Man, I am so pumped for our match tomorrow. <laughs> Me too. Should we get some practice in while we can? Cowdy shakes her head. I think Valerie needs to make the recommended calibrations first. Yep. They aren't major control changes or anything, so you won't feel a difference while piloting. You'll just get better energy efficiency based on piloting patterns Ivan pointed out. Okay, that's good. Coyote nods. That's exactly what we need. Huh, okay. So, what do we do until then? It is reading week. No, I don't say it. No! No! Coyote covers her ears. <laughs> Anything but that. So. Mayu interlocks her arm with Sho's. It won't be that bad, I promise. Oh. Sho glances at Mayu's smile, then his own face lights up. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'll talk to you guys later. Mayu smiles, and the two of them are off. You're all good then, Valerie? Yep, I'll send a text when I'm done. Okay, thank you. I'd better get to studying too. I nod and watch her head off. Well, since I'm already on campus, I'll go submit my report on the coaching session. I wave goodbye. Do you want some company? No, it's okay. I'll be doing some boring stuff anyway, and I'm not a fan of over-the-shoulder spectators. Fair enough. I nod. Alright, let me know if you need anything. Sure. With some time on my hands, I head to the library to actually squeeze in a study session. The library is packed, which I guess makes sense since exams are right around the corner. After circling the desks a couple of times, I manage to sneak into a desk stall just as another student is leaving. I feel like a car trying to find a parking space in a crowded lot. A few hours go by in a blur. Valerie texts at one point saying the changes are done, but otherwise nothing eventful happens. That's all the studying I can do in one sitting. I pack up my tablet and wonder if anyone's available. Well, we gotta see Cowdy again, right? Just as I'm about to dial Cowdy's number, she calls me instead. Phew, I don't look as desperate. I answer. Hey. Hi. Are you busy? Not particularly. What's up? Did you want to come to the gym with me? I'm going to try a new routine and would like to have a spotter. Sure thing, but I'll have you know I'm terribly weak. Yeah, sure thing. The gym in the rec center? Yes, thanks. No problem. See you there. I make my way to the rec center and quickly get changed. Once I'm done, I enter the gym. Cody is in her gym uniform and I stifle a laugh. I thought I'd be used to it by now, but I'm not. As she stretches, I notice a few guys staring very obviously at her, but Cody is too focused to notice. They got lucky this time. Hey, Cody. She nods. Hi, thanks for agreeing to help. No problem, I was going to get a workout in anyway. So what's this new routine you have planned? She hands me her phone and I scroll through. I've mainly been doing endurance training and would like to incorporate more mass building. Ah, sounds good. Why would you want to gain mass as a girl? What's the occasion? Sounds good. All right, let's get started then. She nods and we find an empty bench. She begins gathering weights and adds them to the bar. And keeps adding weights. My jaw drops as she adds 100 pounds to the bar. Is this petite girl for real? Cowdy lies down on the bench and I stand by her head. She adjusts her grip and focuses her breathing, then lifts the bar off and begins her reps. 
Although I knew Coyote <laughs> took her fitness seriously, I'm still impressed. She's attracted a few more onlookers too, so I'm not the only one impressed. With one final exhale, she places the bar back on the bench. Alright, warm-ups are done. Those were just warm-ups? <laughs> she adds another 20 pounds to her weights and repeats her reps. <laughs> After she's completed her sets, she slides out from the bench and wipes her face with a towel. Um, good job, good job. See, good job could be taken as condescending. But I feel like this could also be seen as a little insulting. There's no winning here, is there? <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna do this one. Benching more than your body weight is very impressive. Thanks. Suddenly, her face turns pink and she hits me on the arm. Hey, don't try to guess my weight. <laughs> I grin. Guilty as charged. Okay, your turn now. No, please no! <laughs> oh crap. I mainly do cardio at the gym to stay fit and only occasionally do endurance training. I don't think I can bench much more than her. I don't think I can bench as much as her. <laughs> How do I want to play this? <laughs> Let's go with a safe 100 pounds and high reps. I pull off 20 pounds and slide onto the bench. Coyote spots for me as I begin my reps. After three sets, I finish. I didn't know you do endurance training, too. Yeah, I'm not too interested in becoming a beefcake. Coyote grins, clearly amused. A loud vibration interrupts us. Coyote pulls out her phone from where? Where does she keep her phone? And reviews her text messages. Okay, maybe she has a bag? <laughs> I don't know. As she reads, a smile creeps onto her face. I think I may have an idea who that is. She sends a reply before looking back up. As soon as she sees my wide grin, her smile falters. What's with that look? Was that Aito? Her cheeks flare. How did you know? I have a younger sister, remember? I know what that grin means. It's not like that. What did he ask you? She refuses to answer. Ooh, I guess I'll have to make my own conclusions then. What? Don't be stupid. He just asked if we can go get some snacks for the daycare. We're meeting at the mall. Looks like I'll have to play Cupid. It shouldn't. Be. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. Just, I'll just back out. All right. Whatever you say. Cody shakes her head. Let's get back to the workout. Yep. The rest of the workout is very productive, and I set a new personal record for myself. Cody and I will definitely have to make this a more regular thing. Once we wrap up, we say our goodbyes and head our separate ways. <laughs> the music just came back louder all of a sudden. After parking my bike, I let myself into the house. The living room is empty. Oh, that's cooking, okay. Where is everybody? That's a good Nine Inch Nail song, by the way. I hear voices in the kitchen and hurry over. I particularly like the, like, the remake, I guess, the newer version of it. Anyway, I pause as soon as I push open the doors. Nikki is bent over the table, laughing. Hanyuki stands by the fridge, laughing as hard as Nikki, while Uncle Kaito chugs water, looking increasingly confused. <laughs> oh, hi, Aunt Yuki. I didn't know you were here. Aunt Yuki tries to compose herself when she sees me and rushes over to give me a hug. Oh, good, you're home. Looks yeah, it's me. Got some flour on you. How dare! That's okay. Uncle Kaito's eyes are watering as he lunges towards the fridge and pulls out a carton of milk. Oh, did he have something spicy? Uh, are you okay, Uncle Kaito? He doesn't answer as he chugs a fresh glass of milk. Nikki finally composes herself enough to answer. Aunt Yuki's making his Chinese food tonight. He ran one of the chilies around the rim of Uncle Kaito's glass when he wasn't looking. Oh, you prankster, you. She starts laughing again. It doesn't hit you at first. Once it does... Uncle Kaito takes another swig of milk while Aunt Yuki giggles. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. Their laughter is infectious and I find myself laughing with them. It's good to see Aunt Yuki hasn't lost her sense of humor. Uncle Kaito, hasn't Aunt Yuki played this prank or played the same prank on you before? She has. <laughs> That's what makes it so funny. Well, I mean, like, it's hard to avoid that unless you're just going to be forever paranoid of drinking glasses. It's been a while. Cut me some slack. 
You're losing your touch. Aunt Yuki's been away for too long. Nikki sighs. Do you really have to leave again, Aunt Yuki? It's so fun when you're around. Hey, are you saying I'm not fun? <laughs> no, you're fun too. That sounded awfully like a pity compliment. <laughs> Nikki giggles. Aunt Yuki fidgets with the corner of her apron. Actually, you'll all be seeing a lot more of me. Oh? Kaito looks at her in surprise. Really? She meets his gaze and nods. If that's all right with you. Of course. I, I just... Does that mean you're really going to stay here? Yeah. Unless there's a reason why I shouldn't. I mean, I feel like you guys probably should have talked about this before now, but... No, but... <laughs> Kaito hesitates. Nikki watches with bated breath. Her eyes are wide with excitement, and I can tell it's taking a lot of self-control for her to keep quiet. I'm unsure if I should even be witnessing this conversation. No, you shouldn't be! They should have had this conversation already in private, before. Hence, already. Aunt Yuki seems to understand Uncle Kaito's unspoken question. Watching you with the kids, you've, uh, changed. Yuki, I... <laughs> Nikki can't hold it in anymore and explodes! Aunt Yuki belongs here, Uncle Kaito! Let her stay! <laughs> Both Yuki and Kaito blush deeply. Nikki! What? They clearly need my help. <laughs> Let's give them some privacy. I begin to push her out of the room. But... No buts. Reluctantly, Nikki allows me to lead her out of the kitchen and into the living room. We both sit on the couch and I turn on the TV. Do you think Aunt Yuki will really stay? It's hard to say. I hope so, but I'm not sure. That's exactly why they need my help. This is something they need to work out themselves. But they need someone to remind them of how good they are together. If they can't remind themselves how good they are together, then it's not a relationship that would work. If it's meant to be, then it will be. Nikki gives me a skeptical look. Which magazine did you read that in? How do you know I didn't come up with that myself? She chuckles. Please. I wasn't born yesterday. It's not like that's a generic phrase or anything. We wait in silence. Every so often, Nikki would sneak glances at the door, but she doesn't move. I can't ignore the delicious smell of Kung Pao chicken wafting out of the kitchen, and my stomach grumbles loudly. I kinda wish they were having this conversation after we'd already eaten. Nikki giggles. Are you ever not hungry? On rare occasions. Her eyes widen as her stomach grumble <laughs> grumbles just as loudly. Now it's my turn to laugh. Luckily, we don't have to wait much longer before Aunt Yuki pops her head out. Are you kids hungry yet? <laughs> Starving! Then I guess we'd better feed you. Dinner's ready. I jump to my feet and race into the kitchen, but Nikki lingers beside Aunt Yuki. Does this mean you're staying? Of course I'm staying. There's no way I'm going to let Kato keep you kids to himself. I'm sorry, did you just say Kato? You gotta learn his name if you're gonna be his husband. Nikki grins from ear to ear and hugs Yuki tightly. I'm so happy. There will finally be another woman in the house. I'll... Aunt Yuki laughs as the two of them join us at the table. I don't know how you managed all by yourself. <laughs> Me neither. Everyone is all smiles as they sit down to eat. After dinner, Nikki dragged Aunt Yuki upstairs to show her the new dress she bought last week. Uncle Kaito and I are watching TV. In the middle of our show, his phone dings with an email. As he opens the email, his jaw sets. Is it the PI? What is it? It's an email from the PI. It is. What does it say? He holds the phone out for me to see and we review the email together. Again, the content does not share much, but stresses that the accident might have been more than just an accident. The other driver had been spotted talking to Dad right before the car crash. Wait, someone wanted to hurt Dad on purpose? Kaito's voice is grim. That seems to be what the PI is implying. Why would he want to hurt them? I wish I knew. Wasn't the other driver someone your dad knew? Yeah, Ezra Wilson was Dad's colleague. They worked closely on projects together. Did something happen between them? Not that I know of. And we can't even ask him since he's still in a coma, last I heard. Kaito nods. Well, the PI is still investigating. I'm sure he'll have more information soon. None of this is making any sense. Ezra and Dad worked on the same projects together for as long as I can remember, and he always seems like a nice guy. I can't imagine that he'd want to hurt Dad. 
does this mean Dad knew this was coming too? But how could he? He only left because Nikki called him. And what about Mom? I let out a frustrated sigh. I wish he could just tell me what happened. Wait a minute. Dad's research. The strange encryption in my core. Uncle Kaito notices the change in my expression. What is it? I wonder if this has something to do with my core. Because of the weird thing it did during your first match? Maybe. If whoever wanted your dad dead was after your core, then you might be in danger. You probably shouldn't use Eagle again, just to be safe. I wouldn't go that far. All my core did was use extra energy packs. At least, that's what my professor said. And that's why the referees didn't disqualif my, disqualify me from the match. Hmm. Extra energy doesn't sound like something to kill over. My thoughts exactly. I brought up my core for a different reason. It might be nothing, but our team engineer found a weird encryption from Dad in my core. She didn't think it was anything important, but now, I'm not so sure. What does it say? I don't know. He nods. I try to refocus on the TV show, but I can't stop thinking about the accident on purpose. I think I'm just going to go to bed. Alright, try not to stress too much about this. I promise we'll find out what happened. I smile weakly. Thanks, Uncle Kaito. After saying goodnight, I get ready for bed then slip under the blankets. I close my eyes, trying to clear my mind, but I end up running through every detail of the accident I remember, hoping to find a clue. Eventually, I fall asleep out of pure exhaustion. And the alarm? There it is! Alright, but we are actually going to save the game at this point, so I'll do a quick save. You saw me press that. And then prefs, and then save. And we'll do empty slot number two, because I clicked three last time, I guess. So, to talk a little bit about this recording session then, I mean, obviously I'm going to still play this game, um, but I'm just done with this recording session because it's been three hours now, and I'm sore and stiff and all that. Um, so, first thing that comes to mind is, uh, well, I mean, you know, the accident on purpose because we were just talking about that. Um, so, I was wondering, you know, and, and I think we all kind of were, but ever since the thing happened with Eagle with the whole core overdrive mode, I think we were all wondering about that sort of thing, you know, like whether it was, you know, whether it's related at all, you know, I'm, I'm not going to say I went any further than that with my thoughts, really, but just whether it was related, you know, that crossed my mind, as I'm sure it crossed many of yours. Um, but, you know, learning about more of the information, like, hey, the story is actually going to pursue that. For a while, it didn't seem like it was. It seemed like the story was just kind of, that's how they started it. Um, but it does seem like they're picking that up a lot more with the PI stuff. And I just have to say again, when we first had that scene with the whole PI email and Kaito coming in, dang, that got, like, hardcore. <laughs> like, the music in and then Kaito being super serious and you know, Riz yelling and all that, like, it got intense, like, it was cool, it was a good job. Um, speaking of intense, I liked Coach Ivan, that was funny, um, and I did enjoy the fact that, you know, as soon as he starts speaking, I immediately link him to that other, um, student, you know, and I couldn't remember what his name was, and I can't remember now what his name is, um, but the fact that he's his uncle, like, that was fun, um, so, you know, good guy Ivan there, and, it's <laughs> just the typical, like, super macho man with the mustache, but, like, a big softy and that kind of thing. It was amusing. Um, a couple other things. I am glad, again, that we got the confirmation between Sho and Mayu. Um, you know, they're cute together. I think their story is nice, so I'm happy for them. Um, and then there's this whole thing now with Kaori and Aito. And that's a little sad for me, because, you know, I wanted to be with Kaori. But, you know, it is starting to reach that point where if Kaori is still not opening up to us... You know, you can only pursue someone for so long before, like, you gotta respect yourself a little bit more than that, you know? So, if, you know, I'm gonna, I think I am gonna pursue her a little bit longer, you know, try a little bit more, but I'm not gonna force anything to happen, and if she doesn't, you know, if Coyote doesn't have feelings for me, if she doesn't want to be with me, then so be it, you know? If I have to go through this game single, I will. You know, I don't want to, like, fall back on another character either, necessarily. Like, I don't want to have a rebound sort of thing. Um, but that's just the way it is right now. Like, if the story gets Coyote and Aito together, I'm not gonna try to break them up or anything. Um, at least that's my current plan. I say at least just because with the context and the, the choices the game presents, I might not get that option. But that sort of thing. Um, did I have another thing to say about this so far? 
I don't think so. I mean, again, with um, a lot of this game, thinking back to the choices, as I mentioned that, you really don't have uh, many options sometimes because the story is set a certain way and so they try to give you options but sometimes it's to minimal effect I feel I'm um, like with Nikki wanting to go to the XZ concert you know I wanted to say yes but all of the options were just variants of no some just more you know kind about it some a little more joking about it that kind of thing but they were all no in the end um, you know with wanting to go like when we were in the hot springs and going and spying on the girls like I didn't want to do that because that's a total invasion of privacy and again sexual harassment's not cool but there was just not an option to avoid doing that and so I had to do it like I picked what I thought was the best one for what I was going for with the whole this could only end poorly kind of thing um, but yeah things like that so um, there's always going to be there are always going to be moments in the game, this game or other games like it, where, you know, there's a set path and if, you know, there might be options, there might not be, but even if there are options, it doesn't necessarily mean you have full control of it. I mean, for one thing, they can only program so much into the game, they can only predict so much of what a player might want to say or might want to do during a particular moment. Um, and other times, just um, things could deviate too far from the story they have in mind, so they would have to limit it. You know, have to guide you on a specific path. Um, so if nothing else, the choices can offer a little bit of just, um, you know, inclusivity. You're just included. Um, you're participating. Um, but it doesn't necessarily have the largest impact all the time. Um, yes, things like that. So just pointing out that, you know, those choices, that those kinds of choices rather, the ones that aren't terribly meaningful or don't seem like it at least. Um, or the times where, you know, the character does things that I don't necessarily want to do. Like, they're still prevalent. I'm just pointing that out. Um, I guess the other thing that I wanted to say, kind of along the same lines of um, Coyote and Aito, how they might get t together just in the game. Um, I wonder if, what would have happened if I had pursued Mayu from the beginning? Would Sho and Mayu still have gotten together? Like, does the game disregard that? Or is it because I was showing, like, no interest in Mayu th from that, you know, perspective or whatever, up to a certain point, that then they opened her up to Sho? I don't know, that's interesting. Or at this point, if every opportunity I got, I called Mayu or I hung out with Mayu, would that shift things? Would that actually affect Mayu and Sho's relationship? I guess what I'm wondering essentially is, like, are Mayu and Sho canon? Like, do they have to be together in the story? Um, and would, you know, Kaori and Aito, could they end up canon? Or does it actually depend on the choices that you make or choices you don't make? I don't know. This being my first playthrough, it's hard to say because obviously I've only seen the story go one particular way, this way. Um, so, I don't know. The future is a mystery to me, as I'm sure it is to most of you. Um, I know at least one person has commented saying they also played this game. They pursued Valerie, which, well done, good choice. Um, but, uh, yeah. Alright, I think that's all I have to say, so thank you guys again for watching. I hope that you're still enjoying the series. I am still enjoying this series quite a lot. Um, I think that it's fun. You know, there are those moments that, you know, annoy me a little bit or whatever, but I think that it's very amusing overall. I think it's a good time, so I really do think... Um, not think. I really do hope, rather, that you guys are enjoying this too. Um, but yeah, so... With that, we're calling it here. Last time I hit the mic when I did that, I had to be careful. Cue outro, go!